In today's session, we're going to look at genetics, which is another poem from the Poems of the Decade anthology that deals with ideas of family, childhood, growing up and reconnecting with your past. Now, as we go through some of these sections, what we start to appreciate is the ways in which this narrator is maybe growing on a journey of appreciating her own parents troubled relationship and maybe as an adult she's only really coming to appreciate that and also perhaps because of the, her own troubles in her relationships um, obviously it's from the first person perspective here but the narrative voice um, is fairly anonymous we don't know if it's necessarily the writer uh, but it's certainly something that's quite easily relatable to a lot of people to to consider family issues and family dramas. Um, if we consider the structure, first of all, the features of form, as we always do at the start of these videos, remembering, of course, that poetry has to be differentiated from novels and drama. So we like to look at features uh, that are really indicative of poems more than anything else. So altogether, we've got a collection of six stanzas, five of which are in tercets, and the final is a quatrain, which is a line of four for anybody who needs the extra revision. The tercets themselves, lots of interpretations about this online. I'm sure you've read the idea of the family union that could represent one line as her and the other two lines are her two parents. You could certainly develop on that. The one quatrain we could come back to at the end because it starts to maybe foreshadow the child that she might have. So you've got the address of the child in the final paragraph sorry the final stanza so the quatrain the additional line might actually sort of foreshadow that additional child there's lots of interesting ways that you could elaborate on some of those things particularly because of the nature of the poem and its strong family ties um, if we consider some of the repetition as well, there's occasional rhyme and repetition within these stanzas, particularly the occasional rhyme on the final lines of stanzas and the um, the occasional repetition of end words. So particularly if you look at the significance of hands, hands are a motif for a conceit actually that run through this poem. And again, we'll look at the ways in which that can be explored a bit further uh, when we come to some of the um, some of the specific areas of the poem. So the, uh, the narrator opens by suggesting that there's a relationship between her father in her fingers and her mother in her palms. Now, specifically there, the repetition of the preposition in really does open up the idea of sort of biology and connection and genetics. So really, we, we make straight links really to the title of this poem and the idea that we are all connected. We're all connected by our, our physicality to our parents and our ancestry. The possessions or um, the personal pronouns here are really important. There's a sense of the possession of her parents and her physicality, as if in her physical self, this is where they all belong. Um, there's again an idea of looking and observing as she lifts them up and looks at them with pleasure. Lots of these poems um, deal with the idea of looking and seeing and, and, and finding pleasure in looking. So we've got that sort of theme running through this poem as well. And the notion of, of um, pleasure, but particularly the, the distress maybe that comes along with that. You've got the sort of forced pause at the end of that line to consider it's not so straightforward. It's not quite as easy. Um, I know my parents made me by my hands. Now, it's as if the repetition of that sentiment is almost a bit cathartic to the narrative voice. So the, the persona here, the person who's speaking, is kind of almost convincing herself that this is how she knows that she's part of a family. She's obviously felt some sort of disconnection from her parents' separation, and this is her way of considering how she feels connected again. So this, this repetition with the use of her hands is a constant reminder that she is rooted and connected to something. They may have been repelled to separate lands. And it's interesting when you consider the different connotations of the verb repelled there, because there's a suggestion that they have been repelled in that it was a it was something that happened to them rather than a choice. Whereas the idea of repelling each other is a choice, it's a reper it's a repercussion really of, of the behaviour and perhaps the way that they've acted in the breakdown of the relationship. But very much there there's a there's a focus on separation. So there's an idea that they have disbanded, they've broken apart and live now within separate lands and it's almost as if they've kind of got this two different spaces in her head the idea of completely different lands it might be suggestive of the geographical distance perhaps they did actually move to different hemispheres as is suggested um, but there's certainly this notion of distance with the narrative voice clearly she has this idea that her mother and her father have to exist in two separate locations in her mind as they do geographically from each other but it's the word repair